Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson, and today I'm going to be looking at So You've Been Eaten. Now when I first heard about this game, there were a couple of things that really intrigued me. First was the theme. One of the players plays a deep space miner who has just been eaten by the beast, which is played by the second player. But you know what? This is a normal occurrence, an everyday thing that happens to the space miner. It's all part of the job description. So that theme sounded fun. The other main thing that intrigued me was this is a completely asymmetrical game. That is, both sides are doing completely different mechanisms. Oh, and one final thing. The game says it plays zero to two players. Yes, zero players can play this, but if the game gets played and there's zero players, then who's doing the playing? I'm not sure. The gameplay is pretty straightforward. One player will be rolling dice and taking actions to try and get crystals, while the other player will be playing cards from their hand to either infect their opponent with bacteria or build up a strong enough immune response to dispose of, or maybe digest, the ingested miner. So, will this game be like a shiny new crystal, or will it just give you a stomachache? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, then we'll come back with my final thoughts on So You've Been Eaten. Now, I did want to stress I'll be talking about the two-player only version of my overview, so if you're looking for a single player or if you want to see how the game plays at zero players, there actually is a zero player playthrough on the channel that you can check out. Very good. Anyway, let's get it to the table and we'll come back with my final thoughts. So here is So You've Been Eaten set up for two players. Each board is turned to their active side, which is designated by the Awake Beast and the Awake Miner. The three upgrades are covered at the start of the game, and the four bacteria start on their spaces. The crystals are placed off to one side, and the stomach cards are shuffled and seven are placed onto the board. This is called the digestive track, and the Beast player draws seven cards into their hand. The Beast also gets the nine mutation cards. Take all the immune response cards with the Awake Beast symbol on them, shuffle them, and draw the top three face up. In this two-player version of the game, the goal of the game is going to be different for each side. The miner wins if they collect all eight crystals, and the beast wins if one of the bacteria attacks the miner four times, or if they have five immune response cards at the end of the miner's turn. If neither of those endings happen before the beast can no longer refill their hand, then they're just going to go down to points. In each round, the miner will go first, then the beast will perform their actions. When it's the miner's turn, they will roll all three dice and use them to take actions. They will assign a die to each particular action, and then take the action based on the die value. Since the miner is worried about stomach cards, let's have a quick look at them. All cards will have a bacteria type on them. Some will have tools, which can be captured, and some will have crystals, which also can be captured, and these crystals are how the miner wins the game. So, on a miner's turn, they will perform the actions with their dice. The sun action allows you to move a card on the space that matches the die value, back towards the beast any number of spaces, then you shift all the other cards to fill the empty spaces. After you have done that, you can adjust one of your unused dies by a value of plus or minus one. The eliminate action allows you to eliminate two to three cards. The target card, that is the one in the position of the die value, must have an adjacent card with the same bacteria type. Discard the target card and either or both of its neighbors that have the matching bacteria. You must be able to eliminate a minimum of two cards using this action. The capture actions means you can capture a crystal on the card in the die value spot. Remove the card from the tract, shift all the cards down to fill the gap, then add the crystal to your inventory. You can only ever have one of each crystal, so if you have that crystal already, you cannot recapture it from a different card. The adjust action allows you to change the value of an unused die to whatever you want. And finally, the upgrade action. Placing a die here will have you upgrade your actions. A 1-2 to two placed here will upgrade your stun which will now allow you to do the regular stun action, but after doing the basic stun, take the just used die, roll it, and take another non-stun action with it immediately. If you place a 3 to 4, you upgrade the eliminate action. You can now eliminate an immune response card, which are abilities that beast players can acquire, and I'll talk about them more when I talk about the beast action. And if you place a 5 or 6 upgrade action, you can upgrade the capture ability to be able to capture tools from cards. Again, remove the card from the digestive tract when the tool is captured and you can only ever have a maximum of three tools at once. The tools, when discarded, can do various things. Like the wrench will give you a free upgrade, the teleporter allows you to swap any two stomach cards, the magnet pulls a stomach card forward as many spaces as you want, the adjuster allows you to change the value of an unused die to any value, and finally the drill. It allows you to take three cards from the beast's hand and place any one card in the track wherever you want as long as there are at least one empty space in the track. You then return the other two cards back to the beast. So after the miner has taken their actions, the closest bacteria will attack the miner and that card is discarded. 
The beast will adjust the bacteria track, then reveal the mutation card they played on their turn. If it matches the bacteria that just attacked, the miner loses an upgrade. If it does not match, there's no effect. Once the miners finish their turn, the beast will take their turn. They will refill the stomach track from cards from their hand. They then can acquire one immune response card. Let's have a quick look at one. It will show you how much energy it costs to buy and a prerequisite. Its effect is in the middle of the card, and the bottom right will be the die values the miner can use on their eliminate action to eliminate this immune response card. So to acquire one of these cards, the beast must meet the requirements on the card. They then must have enough energy to spend, and you get energy by having crystals in the digestive track. Each one is one energy. If the beast needs more energy, they can discard cards from their hand that do not have a crystal on them, and these discarded cards are returned to the bottom of the stomach card deck. After they have acquired an immune response card, if they wish, then the beast will then refill their hand up to 7, and finally they're going to be playing a mutation card. They have two of each bacteria in the mutation deck, plus a bluff card. This mutation card will be revealed at the end of the miner's next turn. The game continues in this manner until the, either the miner has collected all eight crystals, or the beast has one bacteria up to level 4, or has five immune response cards at the end of the miner's turn. If neither of these things happen, but the beast cannot refill their hand at the end of their turn, the game is also over. You will then look at the number of stars. For each crystal and upgraded action, the miner gets a point. For the beast, for each immune response card they have acquired, they will add those stars to the stars from their bacteria tracks, but they will also subtract a star for every crystal left in their hand. And the player with the most points is the winner. That's how you play. Let's get back to see what I thought about So You Be Neaton. On to theming components. I really enjoy the theme on this one. It's throughout the rulebook as a sides and even part of the rules themselves. They did a really good job of integrating the theme into the overlay of the game. The actions themselves feel thematic for the most part. The miners trying to collect gems so they can get paid and the beast is just trying to cure their upset stomach. I just found the theme fun and enjoyable. As for the components, I didn't have any major issues. I do wish the printing on the die dust of track was maybe a little easier to read for the miner, so that when they roll their dice, it's kind of very easy to see which card correlates to the, the number on the die. Again, it's not a big deal, just a little usability thing. The digestive uh, cards themselves are a bit busy, but I am glad that they have, you know, the yellow circles and the squares, the blue and purple squares, to really help you pick out what's actually on those cards. The rules are pretty well done. The layout may be a little to be desired. Again, though, nothing major. Overall, I liked the components and I thought they really worked well for the theme in the game. So on to the gameplay. And I so wanted to love this game. Now I'm going to be talking about the two-player game as that's how I played all of my plays for this one. The minor side of the game is, for me and the other people I played against, it's by far and away the more interesting side of the game. You roll the dice and have lots of options in front of you. Almost everything that you can do is useful. And it's a lot of fun to try and figure out the best what the best things you can do with those three dice. You sit there saying, now maybe if I use this spun, I can move this card to the four spot. And then if I modify this die to a five, so when I do the eliminate action, I can eliminate the five card and maybe the two around it, which is going to shift all those cards down. Now I can use the capture to get a crystal. Or maybe if I do this. I also like the fact there was an option for the miner to use a die to turn a, an unused die to whatever they needed. That dice mechanism was fun and interesting as on every roll you were trying to maximize every action that you were taking. You know, even keeping an, an eye on the immune responses that the beast has and the bacteria levels will also dictate what you want to do with those dice. Sometimes it's better to be defensive and eliminate a few of those immune responses, or maybe move the bacteria around so the one that's going to hit you is going to be one of the less threatening ones. So the minor side, fun, and it was constantly having uh, some decisions, you know, some fun decisions to be made. And it always felt great when we were able to pull off a spectacular move where you maybe managed to clear the entire digestive tract. Now for the other side, the B side. This was, in my opinion, the much weaker side of the game. There was nobody I played with that said they prefer to play the B side compared to the minor side. While the minor is taking their interesting turn, the beast just kind of sits there and watches. There's really nothing you can do. They just really can't plan until they know what the tract is going to look like when they start their turn. And when they do get to refill the tract, all they really do is just kind of lay out the cards from the, uh, the, the trying to lay out the bacteria to try and get one of those immune response cards. I do like that you have to pay for them either having crystals in the tract or discard non-crystal cards. That means you have to put crystals, crystals in the tract to keep the game moving, which is a good uh, mechanism. But generally, unless you get an immune response card that allows it, you can't really change the order of the tract cards for the cards that are already there. You're just kind of adding to them from your hand. You know, if you need a, a yellow bacteria at the front and back to get one of those immune response cards, well, good luck. 
I generally found that I was just kind of seeing what immune response cards I could get with what was on the board. It was very, very difficult to plan. I found I couldn't say, okay, next turn I'm going to get this immune response card. I just went after whatever was available. And the fact that the beast does not buy an immune card, the eldest one automatically gets discarded, a new one is drawn, is both good and bad. It keeps those immune cards going, but it also means you have a limited turn to try and get them. So again, just what you can do really doesn't matter. Just buy one and hopefully the ability is going to be useful during the round. And trying to have a back, uh, you know, particular bacteria attack the miner again, again, very hard to predict. You have no idea what's going to be ruled. And because the miner has many more options to manipulate the track than the beast, and they can see where their bacteria are, it always felt like the, back, the uh, beast turn was just kind of a shot in the dark. Those mutation cards I was, almost got to the point when picking was just random. I have no idea what's going to end up in front of the miner, so why have me play those? In a couple of my plays of the Beast, I did feel I was able to pull off maybe a couple of particularly good moves, but most of the time if I won or even lost as the Beast, I didn't feel it was like anything that I did. It was just kind of a random outcome. So would I recommend this game? For two players, I would not. Although in, my, in the gameplay, the game is asymmetrical, I felt that the fun was really one-sided. I did like the theme and the way it was throughout the, the rulebook and the components. I thought the miner's actions were enjoyable and I felt like I was constantly having good decisions to be made on my turn. I liked that there was some dice mitigation, especially the ability to give up a die to get whatever you needed at that time. I enjoyed upgrading my abilities and the constant push and pull of being aggressive or defensive in my play. For the good points on the beast side, I did like the fact that I need to pay for the immune response cards using energy from the crystals in the tract or discarding non-crystal cards. I enjoyed that decision on the, when I was playing the beast. Unfortunately, I found the rest of the beast side of the game not nearly as enjoyable. I found the B side to be too random with too little mitigation beyond some immune response cards. If the miner has some ways to mitigate the roll, why does the beast not have an ability to mitigate their draw? Overall, I'm going to come down at a 6 out of 10 on for this game. For the miner side, I'd give it a 7 or 7.5, but the B side, I'd give it a 5 or 5.5. So split the difference, and I come out as a 6. If you maybe want to play this game solo, you might have a better time than I did, as I did find the miner side of the game enjoyable. But for me, it was a game of two halves. One I enjoyed, and one that I did not. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.